Hey hey, welcome back to Karen's Papercraft. Thank you very much for watching. Wat leuk dat je weer kijkt. Dank je wel. This box is for a girl. It's sturdy. It's beautifully finished and it fits like a dream. I've made one for her brother too, of course. In the video you can see how I cut my designer series paper to make sure that I get a continuous pattern on the lid. So come and join me. So first I'm going to show you what supplies I've used for this box. I have used soft succulent cardstock for this one, Blushing Bride. The designer series paper that I've used is the Gingham Cottage and Celebrate Everything for the liner. And this one is also Celebrate Everything. I'm going to recreate this box today. Um, this is done for another girl and for her brother I've made an extra box as well because I'm sure if I give such a box to a girl her brother will like one as well. So let us start by showing you how I made the embellishments. That's the hippest hippos with the matching dies. I've used the glossy dots and I'll show you in more detail later how I made the embellishment itself exactly. Um, I did make it beforehand to make this video a bit shorter because it's, I mean, the box looks complicated. It's really very easy to make, but there's a lot of cutting and adhering involved. So, I'll start with the bottom. And you need a piece of blushing bright cardstock, which is 8 and 1 8 by 8 and 1 8. And you're going to score this on all four sides at half an inch and at, let me just check my notes, 2 and 3 8. I've already done that, so I can show you. So half an inch, 2 and 3 8. And I've done that all around. So this is his last side left. So half an inch. and two and three eighths of an inch. I'm going to fold and burnish all these score lines and I'm using my bone folder because I want these score lines really flat and crisp. Then the cutting, you take just one of those four edges. It doesn't really matter which one. I didn't fold that one, did I? No, I forgot that one. And you cut up those score lines as far as the second score line, all four of them. Then you do the same thing at the opposite end. So you turn your paper and again you cut four times as far as the second score line. So this is what you have now. Oh, a fourth one. Don't know where my head is today and I forgot to... Golly! I even forgot to fold it. So just one more score line. Now you have these shorter bits and the longer bits in the middle. All those longer bits in the middle you're going to give a really tiny wedge because this will show on the inside of your box and you want it to look neat. So here again, tiny wedge and you go around doing that. Then you have two sides which are going to be your glue flaps and these you shorten a bit and you wedge you don't have to be particularly neat because they won't show. They'll be on the inside of the box and there will be the liner on top even. Now it's time to put tear and tape on. And I'm going to put tear and tape on. I'll just show you.
with your box lying like that. You put the tear and tape on there and there. And for the assembly of the box it helps if you just fold back these flaps to start with. It makes putting the liner in more easy. Then I'm going to remove the tear and tape backing. Not along those edges that are folded back because you're going to stick those down later after you've put the liner in. So first I'm going to partly assemble the bottom of the box. You just fold it in and align it and I'm looking for that point because when that one is straight the rest will follow. looking for the top of the box and then the rest will fall into place. It helps you fold in that flap. I repeat, top of the box and the top of the box and then you use your bone folder to press down on those edges of the box where you have put the tear and tape to make sure that it sticks really well. So here you have the bottom partly assembled and I'll show you how to, bake, how to make the liner and how to put in the liner. I have here a piece of designer series paper which is hmm, funny size which is 3 7 16 by 3 7 no wrong size sorry sorry this is the bottom I'm just looking wrong in my notes this is 6 13 16 by 6 13 16 of an inch which is an awkward size, I know, but it's just one under six and seven eighths. I'll show you on my trimmer. Now, I won't go to a six and seven eighths because I'd have to open it. So, suppose that here you have the seven eighths, that would be the inch score line, and then you go one down, that is the 13 16th. Am I saying it right? Yes, 13 16th. I'll show you later when I make a liner for the for the lid. So this I've cut down to size and I'm going to score this on all four sides at one and three quarters of an inch and I've put it down on top. No, upside down on top. Yes, I've put it on top of my scoring tool. Um, because I'm going to fold it up like that. So here I'm going to score on all four sides at one and three quarters. It's incredibly hot again today. That may be what has scrambled my brain. I don't know. So one and three quarters on all four sides. And then fold it up like that. It's going to go into your box like that. And I'm going to cut these and I'm going to cut them like a windmill. So cut it up and wedge and then you have a quarter turn and you repeat so that you get a flap at every end of the box and I do that because I don't want it too bulky. So again you turn cut up to the score line and cut in at an angle to that score line again and the last one Now normally when you put a box together you would put your flap on the inside. Here I'm putting them on the outside. So I'm folding up the edges and I'm making sure that my flaps are on the outside. Do you see? Like this. And then you can slide it into the bottom. It may require a bit of adjusting. And there we go. It's a tight fit. You push it all the way down to the bottom and then it helps to adhere if you put tiny blobs of Tombow to help those 
parts stay stuck down. And then you can remove the backing from those tops. And I like to do two opposite each other first. And you fold these over and then stick them down. And then I do the other two ends, which are opposite each other. I've discovered it makes for a neater look because these can slide in next to the others. And again with your bone folder, you press down on all of them and you see you have really beautifully finished corners. So let me get rid of my cuttings again and then I'll continue with the top of the box. The lid if you like. Again, some blushing bride cardstock and some designer series paper. Here, your score lines are at one and one eighth and two and a quarter. Again, on all four sides, I've already prepared that. So my final two score lines are at one and one eighth and two and a quarter. And it's the same process. You fold and burnish your score lines all of them this time and the cutting is the same although this lead looks a bit different so I'll cut up those four score lines as far as the second score line on opposite sides same as I did before And you could see that I wedged those long bits as well. Now here you shorten your flaps along the score line and you wedge. And you can see that I've put the tear and tape in exactly the same position. It just looks different now because the dimensions of the lid are different. Now before I do any sticking together, I'm going to put the liner in. And here I promised you to show you that, um, how to do the cutting. So I need a piece, which this is larger than what I need. The piece that I want is just under three and a half. So the size is three seven sixteen. So what I do is I just go to three and a half and then I just move a sixteenth of an inch down. That is just one mark down and then I cut. And you need it just a sixteenth of an inch smaller to be able to go into the lid because this is three and a half or three and a half. If you cut exactly the same size you won't be able to fold the, the sides over. So you go just one down, so three and a half. If you move two down, you move down one eighth of an inch, that's too much, so three and a half, and you just move one down and make a cut. And now it should fit just inside those score lines. You can always check, and you see, it just slides in beautifully and you can fold up those flaps, no problem at all. I'm just looking for my seal. I'm putting a bit of seal in the middle and then, as usual, tombow around the edges. And then I can stick it inside. So put it in what's going to be the inside of the lid. This is the inside liner. And you can see it floats around on the tombow, press down in the middle and then along the edges and normally it doesn't move and it didn't. Okay, now then, I'm going to show you 
how I'm going to cut this piece of designer series paper in such a way that I get a continuous pattern on the box, which makes for a really beautiful look. Can you see? So the pattern goes across the top and the sides. I'm leaving my box there, makes it easier. The piece of designer series paper that I have is five and three eighths by five and three eighths, and I'm going to cut off four inch strips all the while rotating the paper. So I'm putting my trimmer back in and I'm going to put this on to help me realize later what was my top. So I'm going to cut off one inch strips. So I put, I'm just checking, yeah, you can still see. I was wondering if everything was in view. So that's one, and I'm going to put it on there. Rotate the paper. Cut off a one inch strip. Put it there. Rotate again. A one inch strip and put it there. And the last rotation, a one inch strip, and I'm putting it there. Now I've rotated this so often that I don't remember anymore which was my front, which was my top, which was my bottom. And you can see this is still okay. Um, I could have put my arrow. Just like that. You can still see but there are there is designer series paper where you just can't see anymore or you have to keep turning and turning it to make sure that it fits and now I have <laughs> see what I mean? So this is how it fits in and this arrow helps me. It's a bit complicated but I think it's worth your trouble. Now then this part is too long so I'm just taking it again and I'm going to cut off one inch at both ends so one inch and again one inch and I'm putting it back in here you cut off a one inch strip on the right side the right hand side and you put it back in now you're going to cut off a one inch strip at the top and you put it back in and that one already has the correct size. These then I'm going to stick down in this order. I'll speed up for that. It's the same process. A bit of seal in the middle and tombow around the edges. Before I continue with my lead, I'm going to explain to you what I did. I've put some basic white onto adhesive sheet and here this is um, Sahara sand and a scrap of the designer series paper and you can see that I've cut the boat from a piece of basic white as well and I've coloured it with my Tahitian blend and then I've die cut all these elements from the cardstock with the adhesive sheet on the back which makes sticking it down much more easy. The snorkeling mask and the snorkel itself is in basic black and I've put some Gorilla Glass in his snorkel mask and I will link to a video on a blog hop where you can see me do this in detail. So that's a bit about the... oh and here I've just measured him, cut off his legs, sorry hippo, and then stuck them on together so that the legs aren't under the boat because then it'll be a bit bulky. So 
cut it off and then put the two together onto, on top of the lid. I'm going to show you how I made the umbrella for my little hippo. And as I said, I already die cut it once in Sahara sand. And if it's not Sahara sand, I'll blend the name in later. I just can't remember now. And I'm going to die cut the umbrella again in the designer series paper with the adhesive paper on the back. And I'll just make a bit of room on my desk. So you put your die with the cutting side down on top of the right side of the designer series paper and you run it through your die cut machine. Now you have two umbrellas or parasols if you like. And I'm going to poke it out. Now I'm going to use my snips and I'm cutting off the wooden part and then I can stick that on top of the rest of the umbrella. And I'll put my it's a little graft sheet underneath. You can see better on the white grid paper. So you remove the backing. This is now all sticky. And you can put it on top of the other piece. And there you are. And then you can put your hippo on before you put the lid together. It's easier if you do it this way. So I'll just see if she's in the right position. Yeah, so I want her there and there. I'll remember that. Again, I'm removing the backing. That should do it. And then here too. Because there is no way you would be able to stick that handle part of the parasol down, would you, without glue oozing all over the place. And I do think that the umbrella looks a bit odd, so I'm taking a marker and I'm giving it a pointy end. That's just me. Oh, and three glossy dots. Where are they? Here we go. I like these. pinky ones, especially for a girl on a box you need a bit of bling don't you? All right, I don't know exactly which colours these are by heart but I'll blend them in later. So with my bone folder I'm making sure these adhere well and then I can put my box together nearly in the same way as I did with the bottom part. Here I can start by removing all of the backing because there's no further liner to put in. And you put it together in the same way so you fold in the side parts first and align them if you find it awkward that you have the stickiness on these flaps because they might stick to your fingers you could leave the backing on until you have put the side flaps in but it doesn't bother me so first I do two opposite sides and then the other one and again with my bone folder, press down and it's stuck and you see 
it is a beautiful fit. So I'll put it in the boys' box again. And two boxes finished. That's it for today. Don't you just love these boxes? Change the paper, change the decoration, and you have a box fit for any occasion. If you'd like to see more of my videos, here are some suggestions. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Tot ziens.